A question I've pondered over for a long time is why the bell dam bothers with button eyes. If you haven't watched my previous Coraline theories, oh boy, there are a lot of them. I think this is number 14. If you're new here, start with the Coraline core theory that covers my theories part 1 through 10, but do not start with this video first or you're going to be completely lost. So my belief is still unwavering that Coraline never returns to the real world after she enters the other world. There are a number of signs that show this, including a distortion of time when Coraline's trip to the other world appears to take place over a few days. The movie starts in the fall, then abruptly skips to President's Day, which is is in February for any of my non-American friends listening, then the movie ends with the orchard in full blossom in the springtime. Like I mentioned a minute ago, I've gone over this movie a lot with a fine-toothed comb and I've picked out a lot of details that most viewers miss, but I think I've discovered the reason as to why the bell dam sews buttons into the eyes of her victims. Initially, I chalked this up to a scare tactic because if the bell dam freaked Coraline out enough, Coraline would never attempt to open the the little door again and thereby be content and trapped in the Limbo Pink Palace. Again, if you're lost here, please go watch my other theories because I can't explain them all in detail every time. Well, I now have an additional train of thought for the button eyes. Now, I do still firmly believe that the Beldam has Coraline stuck in the Limbo Pink Palace, which is like the second floor of the other world. The first level with the true exit to the real world is in the Beldam's lair. And Coraline's gotten herself stuck on the second level, and then she went and locked the door and threw the key away. Meaning Coraline is trapped forever in the other world, but she's with the Bell Dam, who's posing as her mother, Mel Jones, and Coraline's perfectly happy, so it's not exactly a sad ending. Anyways, about the button eyes. While I thought it was part of the Bell Dam's tactic to make Coraline too afraid to enter the Bell Dam's lair again, I started to wonder what if Coraline was so happy with the other mother that she agreed to the buttons. Well, I have an answer that's short, simple, and practical. If Coraline would have said yes to the buttons, the bell dam would have sewn in the buttons, of course. But not because the buttons have any special power to keep humans trapped in the other world. The bell dam offers up button eyes because she's trying to work smarter, not harder. No matter what choice they make, the kids are trapped and never going home. But if the bell dam's life force is sustained on love, as I've speculated on before, then a child who actually loves the other mother can stay with her in the bell dam's lair. Taking away the child's eyes makes it to where they can't see to escape. And it gives the bell dam the bonus of not having to keep up a charade and expend a lot of magical energy making the place look however the kid wants it to. Think about it. If a child can't see, does it matter what their food looks like or their house or the other mother herself? They could be living in that white space for all of eternity and the blind child wouldn't know the difference. And true, we know that the bell dam can see through the button eyes and probably control whoever has button eyes, but there's no solid proof that Coraline would be able to see herself. Since I don't believe that the ghost children are real, whether or not they can see is irrelevant. And let's not forget, the bell dam doesn't actually need her button eyes to see. Sure, she makes a big show about being blinded by the black cat, but shortly before the grand finale escape, the bell dam reveals that she can shapeshift and create real eyes for herself too, making the buttons just superficial and unnecessary. Keep in mind, after Coraline rejects the buttons, the bell dam's next goal is to keep Coraline trapped in the pink palace limbo. So everything we see after that refusal is just to keep Coraline from ever opening the little door again. Which means the bell dam is going to go all out to freak Coraline out and play her game of cat and mouse. So there you have it. The button eyes are like negotiating a business transaction. You never start with your highest offer. You always start with a lower price to see if you can save money. The bell dam leads with the button eyes offer with the hopes of saving herself energy, which may in turn make her meals last longer. Just to clarify, I believe that the bell dam has a lot more power than she shows us, but I don't think it's limitless power either, or else the bell dam would just go into the real
real world and do whatever she wanted there. So to conserve magical energy, it seems like it would be in the Beldam's own best interest. If I'm still losing you, the Button Eyes are ultimately the Beldam's plan A, so that she has a chance to keep her victims trapped without having to constantly create their visual environment. And her plan B is to herd people into the Limbo Pink Palace level of the other world, where she does expel more energy to keep her sheeple happy, but the Beldam still gets to keep her victims contained like food in a pantry. So it's a higher cost in terms of magic used, but the other mother still wins. Now I know you guys are going to start commenting, do more Coraline, and I love you, but there's only so many theories that I can give you based on this one movie. So instead of saying more Coraline, give me some titles of other movies that you would like me to talk about. I can't make any promises, but I do read most of my comments and I watch as many of the recommended movies that I can. I made my Dumbo theory because of a recommendation, my second Corpse Bride video, Rick and Morty, and a number of others based on fan requests. So so I am around even if I'm not responding and I do try to hear what you guys want to see the most. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. We're expanding, so I have to plug our other channels. Total, we have The Fangirl, dealing primarily with movies and shows, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming, and The Family Family Vlogs. Links are in the description, and we would love to see you at all three channels. Okay, I think that's it. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. We have tons of material across our various channels that you are fully encouraged to go check out. And if somehow you can't get enough of me, please connect with me on Instagram at Say Halo Goodbye or Twitter at The Underscore Fanily.